Hello and welcome to the Faces of Africa Pocket Edition, where we dissect and discuss the topics covered in our weekly documentary show, which takes you through the continent's history, cultures and major issues through exploring great personalities. This week on Faces of Africa podcast, we're taking you to South Africa. The documentary is called Born Survivor. It features Regina Mary, who is a person born with albinism, and is fighting myths and misconception about albinism across Africa. A trigger warning to the audience. This episode contains subject matter regarding to suicide and sexual gender-based violence. My name is Fatiha Mohamed Noor and I have here Regina Mary. Your documentary Born Survivor is so, so deep, is so inspiring. And the fact that it was done three years ago, I'd like to know where are you at the moment? How's life taking you? Tell us about where you are. Survival was like the beginning of me having a platform that didn't just allow me to share my story, but more like to dig out every buried thing that has been septic in my life to a point where it's now out and after it being out it, it it didn't return to me like oh my god how could you say that how how you know that makes that comes to you when you're thinking if i tell people i was raped 15 times what's the first thing they're going to think about me and you worry and you keep quiet mm-hmm. so basically throughout my life i i would have personal uh, conversations with myself and God, you know, say, you know what, nobody will ever know what I went through. You know, nobody will ever understand. Like I would be so bitter that a lot of conversations were internal with me. Mm-hmm. So when Born Survivor came, I feel like it was God saying, now you can talk. So having to speak everything out was like, for me, it was like therapy to start with. You know, it was just like therapy. That's number one. Number two, it was like a cleanser to take everything just out, 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 out. And to shame the devil because nothing negative came back. Number two, I got to have a conversation with my mom for the first time on the show, which was you know, not easy, but that happened. Yeah. And, you know, today it's great, but that time it was a bit, you know, like rough because we both, we have never had the mother-daughter relationship where we can sit down and talk about stuff, you know, just bury things, you know, and in this case, not because she's a bad mother or anything. Also, I believe she went through her own abuse that she was never able to talk about. When I was growing up, um, there were those, the spittings and the, the them callings. So I'm just, I'm just wondering when, when you were with me and at this age, um, how did that make you feel? To be honest with you, ne? I used to hear about it, but never knew that you experienced discrimination until later, you, as when you grow old, that's when you started telling me. And thank God I found the courage to talk, which also gave her as a mother a platform to say, okay, mm-hmm. you know, let, let teach me something I never grew up with, you know. So our relationship is absolutely great today, which I'll get to, because the biggest challenge I ever faced was the fact that I was okay with making other people okay, because I was abused, I was shattered, I basically died from lack of self-acknowledgement. So I made a vow that it's okay to make another person happy, it's okay to empower the next girl, the next boy, but I'm dead. So that was the truth and it was not a good truth because that was just not how life should be. My only purpose for ever talking about memory is to have reference for people with albinism, you know, because when I was growing up, there was no reference. So if that is happening for me, I'm fulfilled. I think what I found also interesting while watching your documentary where, you know, sometimes uh, even as a human being, you beat yourself up. So you're not good enough. You're not made for this. Yes. But you really bit that. And it's so nice to see now where you are. 2023, I managed to get back on my feet. And then I met an amazing man. He's now my fiance. 
Wow. I got pregnant and I was shocked as hell because out of all the things I've been through, I never thought I would get that opportunity. Yeah. You know, and it's it 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 was a shock experience, but it's been the most amazing one. Especially having to see her, having to deliver my daughter who is HIV negative, more grace to my life. Yeah. That has been amazing. And my mom, I'm over to my place, and I'm also managed to actually find my seat for the first time. Mm-hmm. Just having a place to stay and being okay, because as much as we can be strong, life will always have a way to kick you down, and you still have to get back up. Now you. Uh, you have a daughter that's really beautiful, and you said she's now HIV negative. Um, has she also been yeah. affected with? Uh, um, does she have albinism also? No, she doesn't have albinism. She's got melanin. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. But I want yeah. to start, just talk about. Um, we've still seen a lot of cases when it comes to um, people with albinism being fought, basically. Being told things like uh, the skin is good for witchcraft, hmm. especially in a lot of African countries. Are there any other misconceptions that you've seen that is still happening around the continent that you're also dealing with at the moment? So how I became to be positive is not because I contracted this virus from some self-sexual encounters because I was raped because the thieves believed that if they rape me, they will cure HIV and AIDS. So I only vocalize this to, to, to get it into the thick minds of people that actually have even the time or the audacity to even entertain such myths, you know. So it is not true that a person with albinism can cure HIV and AIDS because I was raped for that reason and I'm fine. And... In terms of that just being the first element to say these myths are so deadly and they are still so active, they are still so raw, they are still in a way that community in Africa are not, they're not properly educated about it. Yeah. And in the terms of every, every person you come across will be negative, but others will assume they are positive, but they're wrong information. I met an old lady that looked at me and said, you are beautiful. I had a friend like you. This is just a disease. It's not your fault you have a disease. And I'm thinking, lady, I do not have a disease. This is just another creation. You know, the reason for my color is the lack of melanin. But now just to, as we finish the the, the interview, I'd like to know what are your aspirations uh, in the fight um, for the rights of people living with albinism. I always make sure that when I'm speaking on interviews, I'm reaching out to a larger community than just people with albinism, you know, and that's my first one. And my second aspiration is just to continue trusting that God says he knows the plans he has because I need to continue my voice albinism, the new era for sure. I, I desperately want to continue. And every time I'm told you don't have this, you don't have that, that means not pursue this. And it's frustrating to me because end of the day, all that is needed is information to be everywhere. If information could be in the hospitals, wherever, I wouldn't even mind distributing it myself, but we do not have it in terms of visual, in terms of people who albinism who can tell their stories, you know. Because it's not always the negative stories. There are people who have had parents who know how to take care of a child with albinism. And today they are lawyers, they're this, but nobody knows about them. So my aspiration is to make sure that I pursue my voice and fulfill the purpose I began. I need reference and evidence for any other child that is born out there. No matter what community says, it's fine. They'll always go out there research albinism. They won't just find deadly or you are a curse. They'll find they'll find the story. They'll find that Regina is actually an actress, and they will know that it's possible to be what they want to be. So that is one. My second aspiration is to get the world to know about the deadliness of skin cancer for people with albinism and how I personally cannot continue losing people. I've lost two people who have died because. I am so, I just have a big heart that if you call me at 2 a.m. in the morning and you say you need help, I will get up and I'll come to you. 
to have had two people die because the cancer had already spread and the information was not active at the time. So it's like my biggest aspiration, I pray and I know it has to come true, is to have a documentary on albinism skin cancer in Africa so that people with albinism themselves can focus on care of their skin first before worrying about who thinks what about them. Because once the skin cancer starts, it cannot be stopped. Wow, that is incredibly beautiful. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Remember, you can watch this documentary on our CGTN platforms on Sunday. It runs live at 12.30 East Africa time, 17.30 Beijing time and 9.30 GMT. On Monday, it will be uploaded on our YouTube channels. See you next time.